Bitte? Sehen Sie mal da. Oh, äh, danke. Passport, please. Thank you. Mr. Hayes? Yeah? The purpose of your visit? Business. Do you have anything to declare? No, nothing. Have a nice trip, Mr. Hayes. Thank you very much. The writing is the same. If you want your client's secret bank accounts to remain a secret, will pay us 10 million francs. Wait for instructions. I don't understand. Why should we pay 10 million francs to, to these people wherever they are? What are we to do? Go to the police? Never. Yes? Mr. Dwight McGowan. From America, just phone. He insisted on coming to see you immediately. Very well. When he gets here, I'll see him. Another one? American McGowan. Earlier, I got a call from Herr Costa from Amsterdam. He said it was a matter of extreme urgency. I think I need a drink. What about you? Definitely. You hear the name David Christopher? You mean that American in Geneva? An American used to be with the United States Department of Justice. He knows a great many names and can pull a great many strings, as we well know, both of us. Oh, look, uh, he's moving out. I will hold the place for you, but this time be quick. 
no, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's for this gentleman. Hey! You must hurry, you see. You forgive me? I forgive you. Good. You for our illness must be together. Forgive me. Not again. Looks like it. Now, lady, we gotta stop meeting like this. Well, people will stop. Right. I have an appointment. <laughs> you know, I haven't had it, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll toss a coin. I think I've got a two-headed one. I'm going to toss it to see who goes first. Very well. I go ahead. Miss Abbott. Mr. Christopher, it's awfully generous of you to interrupt your vacation at such short notice. However, I completely forgot that Miss Abbott is always on time for her appointments. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Uh, won't you come in, please, both of you? Send him in. Benning, a uh, uh, Mr. Robert Hayes of Chicago to see you. Much as I would like to take advantage of your very delightful company, I think it's best that we get to the point of this meeting. Good. Now, Miss Abbott, the bank has retained Mr. Christopher in this special emergency to protect the interests of its clients, and I wanted him to meet you. Why does Miss Abbott need protection? I asked the bank for a statement. This is it. Routine statement identified by a number only. Compare the two. And you will know why the trouble sleep in the life tonight. Mademoiselle Denise Abbott, unless you pay us one million Swiss francs to be silent while you have a number to count, will be revealed in London. One million francs? That's stupid. Where am I going to get a million francs? And they can see what I've got. 200,000 or something. Less now. Miss Abbott, the first steps have already been taken. I'm sure Mr. Christopher will have some questions to ask you. And I propose that you make yourself available to him later. Of course. If you need any help, don't hesitate to call us at the bank. All Mr. Christopher is at the Brown House daughter. I'm at Belleville. I'll be the same. Delighted to have you with us again, Mr. Hayes. Did you have a good trip? Cut the crap, Benninger. You got some explaining to do. There's a million there. For account number 763421. This, this is what I got to show for my account. I trusted you and your damn bank. Now somebody squealed my damn number to somebody. And I'm dead unless I come up with a million francs like today. Robert Hayes, unless you pay us one million Swiss francs to be silent, your secret bank statement will be revealed to your business associate. Yeah. I'm terribly sorry. Sorry, bullshit. I want to know what you're going to do about it. Well, Denise Abbott is the fourth victim in the last 24 hours, the others being 
Andre Carter from Amsterdam, Floyd McGowan from Los Angeles, and a Georg Rascher from Vienna. That's right. Georg Rascher. But uh, didn't I read about him in the newspaper? Wasn't he killed in a restaurant last night? Yes, I'm afraid so. Now, what's more, this came this morning. You want your client's secret bank accounts to remain secret. You will pay us 10 million francs. Wait for instructions. I can't impress the point too strongly, Mr. Christopher, that there must be no publicity. We cannot afford a scandal. Yes. Sorry, Arato, but uh, Mr. Hayes is another of the victims. Hello, Bobby. What's he doing here? Do you know each other? Yeah, why not, socially? Answer me. The bank has retained Mr. Christopher to protect his clients, Mr. Hayes. Protect us? What are you, crazy? He's U.S. Justice Department. Not anymore, Bobby, not for a couple of years. You hear me? Swiss banks don't give out their clients' numbers. Not for nobody. You got some friends back home been looking for you. You know that, don't you? They'd like to pay you back for all you've done for them. They got a long memory. All right. I'm leaving this bank right now, and I'm making a long-distance phone call. Person to person. My guess is if you're not out of this town by this time tomorrow, they're going to find you in the nearest meat house, along with the other dead pigs. Justice. That's all I need. I must apologize for our client, Mr. Christopher. Won't you sit down? This is my vice president, Mr. Benninger. Mr. Benninger. Hello. You know this man, Hayes? Yes, I know him. He's a crook. His partner is worse. That threat. You think he was serious? Yes, he was serious. Well, what are Mr. Hayes' problems besides the obvious ones? Here. Yeah. So, Mr. Hayes is victim number five. Here. Yeah. Is this his own number to count? That is correct. What does this represent? We'll give you attention to the deposits and withdrawals on both accounts. It looks like he's taking money from this account and putting it in this account. Mm -hmm. Again, correct. I uh, found out about this just uh, very recently. He invests the funds that he borrowed and keeps the profit for himself. Unfortunately, at present, he is heavily in debt to account number 763421, as you can see. Bad investments. I'm afraid you don't have that information. I see, but if account seven, six, uh, one, three, four, two, one belongs to who I think it belongs to, Bobby Hayes is ridiculous. He's not a beginner. He knows what his associates will do to him if they find out about it. But that's his problem. This one's ours, isn't it? Blackmailers want uh, 10 million francs from the bank and 1 million francs from each of the victims, five so far. Fifteen million francs, right? If we exclude the unfortunate Russia. You know, the price will stay the same. That was only a warning. So fifteen million francs, that's what, approximately six million American dollars? They must think you'll all pay one. Because you can't go to the police, the scandal would be public in 24 hours. Not very good advertising for a proper Swiss man. And because the blackmailers have five names that go with five numbered accounts and information about those accounts that the five don't want exposed. Who could have put the names and numbers together? Well, that's quite obvious, isn't it? Is it? Well, of course. These uh, five people must have been incredibly careless. Nobody's careless with a secret number to count. Especially in the case of Bobby Hayes. Now, gentlemen, if I wanted to put the names and numbers together, I'd come to Zurich right here to Hurtleberg. I'd find somebody in your organization who had access to the names and the numbers. Now, who do you suppose that somebody could be? 
Well, I suppose I could put the names and numbers together. Well, you're suspect number one. The second and most likely suspect would be me. Our master list is kept in our vault, a special safe. Only I have the combination. Now, you're suspect number two. Is that it? We Swiss are a cautious people. Obviously not cautious enough. Yeah, I will have your secretary make appointments with Mr. Costa and Mr. McGowan. See, Denise Abbott's expecting my call, and Bobby Hayes doesn't want to talk to me. And Mr. Rothschild is dead. I guess that's it. I'll send you a letter stating the terms of my employment. If you agree, I'll be working for Hurdle Bank. It was very kind of you to come. I know we're in trouble, but I'm confident that you can help us. I'm doing my best. I hope his best is good enough. Because, of course, that. When was the booking made? Today, uh, yesterday. Oh, what the hell? It was last night, Chicago time. Oh, yes, I have it. The package was left here for you. I'll take that. All right, Mr. Korset. Would you please sign at the bottom, sir? I already have the other details. How long do you need the car? Not long. <laughs> and here are the keys for the silver gray BMW. And you find it at the end of the hall, through the door in our parking lot. Thank you, honey. Goodbye. Christopher and Associates, consultants on international affairs. May I help you? When in the hell did I acquire Associates? I'm just practicing, darling, for when you make me your partner. Besides, it sounds more legitimate. The only thing illegitimate in that office is you, Connie. Hey, grab a pencil. You are so old-fashioned, David. It's the electronic age now, you know. Yeah, all right, turn on the damn machine. It's on, sir. Get a hold of Jack Foley at the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Tell him I want some information on a Dwight McGowan. He's a Texan, but he runs his business out of L.A. And ask him if Luigi Vasili has got any of his people coming in and out of Zurich, and if so, why? Next, get a hold of Freddie Cohen in Paris, honey. If you can't remember the number, look it up. I want some information on the following. It is bad news, isn't it? No. Not necessarily so. It's just an unexpected complication, that's all. Then you mean all of our planning is just out the window? Please, relax, will you? <sighs> you make me very nervous. Come on, sit down, have your drink, and listen. Yes, sit down, have a drink, and listen, and relax. France, everything depended on today. We have very little time, France, don't you see? I know what it is. The bank doesn't want to pay. That's it, isn't it? We won't get the money. Now, Rita, for God's sake, this is getting ridiculous. Please, try to control yourself. Hmm? I'm sorry. I love you, remember? I love you, too. But I have this terrible feeling. What was it, Franz? What was what? The unexpected complication. A consultant called David Christopher has been hired by the bank. He's a very clever man. We must find a way to deal with him. Denise Abbott, I'm sorry to disturb you, but 
something rather urgent has come up. What happened? I'll tell you when you get here. Hmm? All right, I'll be at the Bellevue in about 20 minutes. Is that all right? Yes, that will be okay. <laughs> there is plenty of parking. They took a shot at me down there. We had a fight, and he lost his gun somewhere over there. Schwanz, yeah. come over here. See if you can find a gun. Okay. Hey, Captain, I had an appointment about a half an hour ago with a client at the Bellevue, sir. Boeing Zurich is consulting you. Heard about it. On what? Business. Business. Are you registered at the hotel? 709. Mm -hmm. Who was he? The man with the... Yeah, the man. I don't know. I didn't get that good a look at him. Uh, I was pretty busy. Mm -hmm. You've just given me a fairly detailed description, Mr. Christopher, so you weren't that busy. Captain, there is no gun at the hut. Mm -hmm. So, well, he did take a shot at me. Now, they must have heard the shot. Look, I don't have a gun. For the moment, Mr. Christopher, you may go. But I think we shall meet again. I'm in charge of the Federal Bank detail, Zurich.
Denise Abbott? Who are you? Uh, David Christopher, you phoned me. You're late. I, I didn't think you were coming. I was taking a bus. 
Come in, Mr. Clay. Sit down. I change into something less comfortable. Make yourself a drink. I'll drink what you drink. German? Ah, uh, no. It doesn't matter. Personally, I never listened to the words. What I was drinking. It's kind of joking. Just as fine. Do you? Uh, uh, no what? Listen to the words? Uh, no. No? I suppose it's too gauche for something to admit that. In these days of the philosopher minstrel telling us all about life. But frankly, I don't give a damn. Yes to your quest. Yes to it. You said it was urgent. You said 20 minutes. Yeah, I want to apologize about that. I ran into a curious policeman. I must admit, I am curious too. About what? Mr. Hurtle called to assure me that this very clever man, Mr. Christopher, was not handling my situation. Yeah, Hurdle's been a banker too long. He uses words like situation when he means blackmail. Are you very clever, Mr. Christopher? Well, that depends on who you talk to. I was also told I, I'm not the only one involved in this situation. No, there are others. And you will investigate them all, look in their closets and find skeletons? Show me a closet. Why would Mr. Hurtle hire you to protect me? Why not? Well, for one thing, to say you've been with the United States Justice Department, then let's rather appropriately, if that's the word, to make a home in Switzerland. So? So one wonders what you've got to hide. That we were, um, I want to talk about your problem. If you have something you want to ask me or uh, talk to me about, you just go right ahead. Sorry. Just a bit. Yeah, there is something that's really bothering me, something I, I want to talk to you about. How many accounts, a secret that is, would there be at her to bank? I don't know, a thousand, I guess. That's it. That's just it. If there are, why would you pick the ones like me? Only someone inside the bank. Ones like you? The ones with skeletons. Does a skeleton have a name? James Ashwood. Lord James Ashwood. And Lord James doesn't want his name in the paper. Wouldn't be helpful to his career or agreeable to his wife. Lord James was, No, it's uh, been over now for some time. But the blackmailers think it still make good read. Oh, well, sir. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. What is it? Oh, Mr. Christopher. Yes. For you. A certain Captain Fry, I think he said. Hello, how'd you find me? Since I know the Swiss police are very efficient, what do you want? The hell would I want with a rented car? Now, what in the hell is all this about a Hertz car? I don't need a Hertz car. I got a car. You see it? The man wore a Hertz uniform. He stated the car was ordered by you. He mentioned your room number. 
It's a package, Herr Captain. And he said that the package you want to deliver it is in the trunk. Shall we examine this package? I suppose if I said I didn't want to, you'd insist. Yes, I insist. Shall we go? It's 11 o'clock. You've overslept. I was up half the night with the Zurich police who insist I'm responsible for a Bobby Hayes that was stuffed into a trunk of a rented car, which they say I rented, which I didn't rent. Now, don't further complicate my life. What is it? Did you escape? No, no. I, I, I didn't sign for the car. They let me go. I don't understand. Never mind. Get to the point now. Jack Foley said there was trouble. What kind of trouble? Two men, Kozak and Sando, employees of Richie Vasili, left Chicago in a hurry night before last. Destination, Zurich. Yeah, well, they did their thing. They're probably halfway home by now. Unless they stay on. Unless what? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Go on. Well, let's start with Russia. Now, Freddy says he's a Czech or Bulgarian. One of those. An arms dealer specialized in selling old weapons to new countries. And really ripping them off. And they swore to get him. Freddy says it's only a matter of time. Yeah, well, Freddy's right. Only his time ran out yesterday. What else you got? Well, so far, Hertel and Benninger have a clean bill of health. Uh, Jack Foley said he's mailing you a file on Hayes. I sent a messenger with a dossier on Denise Abbott to your hotel. Let's see, uh... That just leaves Mr. Texas. Right, McGowan? David Christopher. That's right. How about sharing some of this back home whiskey with me? That beer is fine. Waiter. Waiter. Bring my friend here a nice cold beer. Well, Davy, I've been wondering when you're going to get around to old Dwight. Herr Hertel tells me you're going to be my knight in shining armor and keep those bastards off my back. Same message to the Internal Revenue Service? You've been talking to someone about me, boy. They volunteered the information. You sure are a quiet one, David boy. But now, don't you worry. I got me a deal simmering back in L.A. that'll set me flying. Those tax claims, peanuts. Old Dwight and his Uncle Sammy just has a little disagreement over some back taxes. Nothing serious. Well, old Dwight, I'd be a liar if I said they weren't concerned. My old dad used to say, son, don't you lose your head, because your ass is sure to follow. You want to translate that for me? Well, let me say it this way. You take care of this blackmail bull, and I'll take care of my Uncle Sammy, you hear? How well did you know Hayes, Russia? How about Costa, Denise Abbott? No, I didn't know him. Herr Hurtle mentioned them to me, but I never knew him, boy. Who handled your account? Me. How about your wife? She know about it? Oh, little lady and I have been divorced for nine years. Secretary, business manager? Nobody. I guard those papers with my life, boy. See, I'm scared, Davy. I don't have much more time I'm getting on, and I can't afford any big setbacks. Well, Mac, uh, money ain't everything. You trying to tell me something, Davy? 
Yeah, five little secret accounts came to Zurich. Hayes was killed, and then there were four. Rashi was killed, and then there were three. You show up, that your daddy might turn out to be right. Hello, Rita Jensen. Rita, it's Franz. Everything all right? So far, so good. I'll set it up. But just a matter of following through. What's the plan? The justice it is craft. Now you know what to do. Meet me tomorrow morning, just before noon, at the entrance of the park. All right? You did it. Good morning. Good morning. Herr Costa, this is Mr. Christopher. As I told you on the telephone, we've retained him to protect us and you. Now, these seem to be the final instructions. The day after tomorrow, you're Mr. Christopher. They know you. With 15 million francs in uncut diamonds, accompanied by the account holders, will proceed to Wildersville to the first intersection past Interlaken. There you will find a car parked next to a wooden barn with further instructions. No surveillance or all lives are forfeit. It's going to be a hell of a crowd. Can you get the diamonds? We have a supply in the vault. How about you, Mr. Carster? Are you going to come up with the money? Why should I pay a million francs? I did not break security. The bank did. You have evidence. Evidence? Evidence, facts, proof. How else could it have happened? No evidence. Actually, Mr. Christopher, Herr Benning and I have discussed this matter. And we reached the conclusion that the bank, without admitting any irresponsibility, will pay the ransom in order to save the lives of our clients, especially after the dreadful death of Mr. Hayes last night. I can't risk another life. That's uh, very noble of you, Herr Herzl. We realize this is a temporary solution. But the reputation of the bank is worth more than 15 million francs. And the bank will make up its losses with additional charges to its customers. The percentage of loss will have very little effect on the charges of the customers. No wonder they thought you might pay. We'll pay just this once. That's why we hired you. We do not like the possibility of further loss along these lines. I see. Mr. Costa, I'd like to talk to you. What are you after? Well, the bank has hired me to protect its clients from blackmail. I just want to know why you're being blackmailed. Isn't that academic now? The Hurtle Bank has agreed to follow the blackmailer's final instructions and pay their demands. Your job now, it seems to me, is to see that these instructions are carried out. <laughs> I must go now. Herr Hertel, may I thank you for your gracious handling of a most difficult situation. Auf Wiedersehen. Well, as you pointed out, we have no evidence. And at this moment, I have no choice. I spoke to Mr. Hurtle. He says there's a ransom to pay? Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. Good. Follow me.
the stupid child. Sorry, I'm late. I got held up in traffic. I'm afraid you made a mistake. Uh, it's no mistake. My name is David Christopher. I don't know any David Christopher. I'm sorry. I am very big on secrets. Any friend of Franz Benninger is a friend of mine. And what big secret do you know about me, Mr. Christopher? Look, call me David. I'll call you. What'll I call you? For somebody who's that big on secrets, I'm surprised you don't know. What's up, Shinbring? Uh, what would you like? Nothing, thank you. Uh, nothing. Now, Miss, uh, Miss what? Jensen. My name is Rita Jensen. Rita Jensen. And it's not a very big secret. And if you would excuse me, please. What do you have? Oh. I don't care. Campari soda, anything. Uh, Campari soda for Madame and uh, vodka for me. Or ice twist of lemon. We are in trouble, Franz. Uh, what trouble? That man, David Christopher, saw us together. When? In front of the bank, I suppose. He followed me. What? Would you like to order now, sir? No, oh, thank you. Uh, later, Franz. What did you tell him? Nothing. What did he say? He said any friend of Franz Benning is a friend of mine. Franz Benninger, my own vice president? It can't be. I simply cannot believe it. Uh, that's my information. Yes? Mr. Christopher, please. For you. Nello. Now wait. That's when? At the house, Bartholomew. When? Black. I'll be there. Franz Benninger. You 
wants to meet me. Coming out of the bank. part of blackmail? Blackmail? Oh, that's ridiculous. You are talking about blackmail? You have known Franz for over 30 years. You think he would stoop to blackmail? The two of you have been up to something. What is it? It was my fault. Everything. My father died two months ago. He had, uh, I would say, a very good business. But lately, he had trouble, financial trouble. So what has all this got to do with Herr Benninger? Well, my father had his numbered account in your bank, so I made an appointment with Mr. Banninger, and uh, he said without the proper papers, he could not hand over the account to me. That's correct. Well, and, uh, then I saw Mr. Banninger quite a lot of times, and we fell in love. And he decided to turn over the numbered account to me. And then with all these murders happening, I mean, we were afraid that if the case would not get solved, and if David Christopher could not solve it, everything would be lost, so we had to hurry. And he turned over the account to me, and I, in turn, paid off the loan and the debts of my father. And he did this without consulting me? Yes, Mr. Hurtel, without consulting you. You see, Franz didn't think he was doing anything wrong. The money was legally mine. I'm the only heir. And believe me, Mr. Hurtle, it did pain him to go behind your back. It really did. But you see, 
He loved me, and he wanted to help me. And I loved him. Excuse me, but I thought you would like to know that uh, Benninger's condition is good. He was very lucky. Thank you. Oh. So, your problem. Uh -huh. Tomorrow morning, give you time for the time. Tell them to cut my gown and cost and meet me at my hotel at 8 o'clock. I've got a plan to catch. But where are you going? What about tomorrow morning? I'll be back. Christopher at the airport. At the airport? Yes, at the airport. We have a problem, Sergeant. We do? If we find that one of our banks is being blackmailed, and a number of its clients are involved with disclosures of their secret numbered accounts, complicated by the fact that two of these clients have been, shall we say, being terminated violently. Major crimes have been committed. Murder and blackmail. So what should we do? Captain, we must go to the commission immediately. Wrong, not immediately, but very soon. I don't understand. If we present an unfinished equation to the commissioner, a problem without a solution, we have a, a scandal of major proportions. And that is one thing our country does not need now. A major banking scandal. David Christopher is a very clever man. He told me a very interesting story. Fascinating. I've given him 24 hours. Come, Sergeant. We have work to do. Where was he going? Who? Christopher. He didn't say. But you know. Yes, I know. Uncut diamonds. Yes, very clever. Uncut diamonds? High value in a small package. Easy to conceal, easy to market. Virtually untraceable. Yes. Very smart, our Mr. Blackmail. Sir, Krause is my name. Here are the diamonds. I will pick up Miss Abbott at the Bellevue. Yes, sir. Take the autobahn. I'll tell you when to get off. Very well, sir. What's that? 
Uncut diamonds. That's what they want. The bank says that's what they'll get. They don't look very pretty. Go to Briens, where the road to Canal crosses the railroad tracks. The steam engine waits for you. Further instructions by the engineer. Well, you check the car. All right, McGowan, let's go. I'm sorry, Davy boy. This is as far as I go. I can't make it. Instruction says it. Yeah, I know. I said all of us. I'm sorry, Davy. I want no part of it. <clears throat> I'm a sick man. I've gone as far as I'm going. Uh, Chakasa, you take uh, Mr. McGowan back to his hotel. He's not feeling well. Very well, sir. What happened? He said he's sick. He's going back to the hotel. How is it? One of the cylinders is bad. Points mm -hmm. need adjustment. Carburetor's dirty. Besides, she's stolen. No? no registration papers, no insurance, nothing. Zentrale. Zentrale an Lima 7. This is Captain Frey. We are in Briens approaching Interlaken. Have just passed the black Mercedes 600. Going now towards Zurich. License number ZH5001. Pick up and follow. But do not interfere or stop. We'll contact later. Ende. I think I recognized Herr McGowan in the back seat. Yes. So did I.
the ski lift platform. Hello. Start the ski tour. Bring the diamonds up to the top of the ski lift. The rest stay in plain sight. There is a rifle on each one of you. Okay. Get on to bring the diamonds to the top of the lift. You two are supposed to stay in plain sight. May I make a suggestion? You have no value to these people. They'll kill you without compunction. But you think they won't kill you? I have a value. I may be a future object of blackmail. And if they were foolish enough to try, I'm a fairly good shot myself. Allow me, Mr. Christopher. Go ahead. Captain Fry, police. Have you seen two men and a woman, one man and American? Yes, I just took them up to the ski lift. I was given some money yesterday and told to expect them. It was a joke. He wanted to play on his American tourist friend. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> a joke. Can you show me exactly what you did, please? Yeah, I called him from the cab. the ski though. Bring the diamonds up here, the rest stay in plain sight. There is a rifle on each of you. He said there was a rifle on each of us. You know what he said. He talked to me on the phone. Why are you doing this? I flew to London last night. I had a little talk with Lord James. Why did you do that? Well, maybe I was jealous. Did he matter with was his mistress? Oh, you can deny it. He left out the good part. Ever since he said goodbye, you've been blackmailing him. He's tired of it. He told his wife, he told his children he's going to take his chances with the newspapers. What does that have to do with it? Well, once a blackmailer, always a blackmailer. We well, tried to figure out what could put four unlikely characters like McGowan, Costa, Rasher, and Hayes together, and I came up with you, honey. Beautiful woman alone in Zurich will do anything for money. Even if it were true, what does it prove? Well, it proves that nobody broke bank security. Nobody gave away any secret numbers. There are no mysterious blackmailers blackmailing all of you. You pooled your statements and blackmailed each other. That's what it proves. You have a lovely imagination, David. Well, you tell me where I went wrong, then. 
If nobody takes this diamond, then there is no crime. Not one you can prove. You count two murders and attempt on my life as a misdemeanor. Mr. Hayes was killed by a gangster from Chicago. That's what I read in the newspaper. And poor Mr. Russell was murdered by his business associate, whom he was cheating. I suppose you didn't try to kill me in the car. You didn't encourage Bobby Hayes to try to kill me in the garage. I'm not responsible for Bobby Hayes, and I'm not responsible for Mr. Costa or for the very charming Mr. McGowan. Yours and mine. I want that. The blackmailer got them. He killed McGowan and Costa. He got away. Don't you see? Who loses, David? The bank? Doesn't think of me. The bank has no morals. Yeah, neither do you, lady. I will have those guys. have an affinity for dead bodies, Mr. Christopher. Yeah, that's true, Captain, but this time I've got an explanation. A little complicated, but you're gonna love it. Thank God you came in time, Inspector. This horrible man, he's responsible for all this. He killed two men, and he was trying to kill me, too. You are safe now, Miss Abbott. These are serious charges, Mr. Christopher. You will return to Zurich in the custody of Sergeant Schwanz. While I escort Miss Abbott. Oh, that was the most, the most terrible yes, experience yes, in my yes, life. It has been very difficult for you. You won't forget to bring the diamonds, will you, Mr. Christopher? Now, Miss Abbott, you will tell me the diamonds. 